let's create your personalized Sherlock Holmes investigation. I would like to include me as a knocker up. It's those guys that, that knock on the um, windows of the people that have to work early. I called myself Raphaelus Shroom, which is close to my real name. And Mudlark uh, called Elon Musk. Yeah, uh, I think we should go with an ancestor. Let's go with Walter Henry Musk. They are all part of the story. I need a suspect. Let's go with my sister, Joanna Shroom. What does also need to be in there? I think something personal, like a personal item that I really have interest in, like... Chocolate. I know. <laughs> Chocolate has to play a role. A major role. Let's go with the setup and let's see what kind of story ChatGPT creates for us. Now that it's thinking, we can enjoy some little chocolate. Oh, it's too quick for me. Okay, here we created the story for a 35 minute audiobook, whatever you want to do. Please sort the story like this. First, the narration, then all led by the first character. I think the first one is Sherlock, right? And so on. I think that's all that we need to do. Oh my lord, it has to think so long. I'm, I'm very curious if it can do it because I don't want to wait twice. We're going to see. Oh, it's 93 seconds. Wow. Oh my god. I think it was done very well. Oh, there's a lot of stuff that Sherlock says. Where's Elon Musk's? Walter Henry Musk. Yeah, there he is. Bernard Cadbury. A lot of different characters. Okay, cool. Okay, we have the narration right here. And we can just copy the narration and then we have the first part. There we go. Who are we going to generate the voice of Watson with? So I hope that we can go with one of those where it says character and it has maybe even has a British accent. Let's see. It was a fog-laden morning in October when I found Sherlock Holmes gazing intently at a peculiar box of chocolates. I like the voice for Watson. You know, we generate the speech here and then we download it again. They appear to be ordinary chocolates, Holmes, albeit of a rather fine quality. It doesn't look good for Miss Shroom. It's so funny when you hear so little uh, bits and pieces. It doesn't look good for Miss Shroom. No, it does not. Oh, my little baby sister. Oh, I'm so psyched for the final product. Oh my god. And now it's the most interesting part is the voice of Sherlock because he has so much to say. And let's go for the characters. In a middle-aged American voice, a professional voice clone. The stillness of the evening was pierced by the sudden wail of a distant siren. And oh, that sounds cool. Let's add this one. I think that Sherlock has less emotions, so it's it's okay if we choose one that is like a narrative voice. But appearances can be deceiving. Tell me, does the name Walter Henry Musk mean anything to you? Oh man, Walter Henry Musk. It's so cool that the emotion changes with each sentence, even though Sherlock has little emotion, but it does. It does work out. It's really good. Our first destination was the Sweetworth Chocolate Factory. I love it. Grand brick building emitting the rich <laughs> scent of cocoa. The scent of cocoa is everywhere. And now there is myself. So I could add my own voice here, but I won't do this right now. I will do this with the next video, maybe. We, we want to stay on topic. And now we go to characters. No, 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 no. I am maybe Marcus. We do not quit playing because we grow old. No. Get down now! Enemy taking over Bravo! Oh my god. So many options. Leave me alone! Oh, that's too much. A man sees in the world what he carries in his heart. <laughs> oh, nice. That is amazing. True. Without that possibility, nature would not incite us to have them. I mean, that's all a bit too much. I'm just, I'm just a knocker up. Government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. So different to mine. I think just because it's so special, I want to include it in, in audiobooks. You should have very special voices. A guy, there he is. He's anxious. So let's generate some speech. It's about my daughter, Joanna. She's been accused of theft. Damn it. Okay, I did mention that she's my sister. 
that is my bad. That is totally my bad. But you can optimize this for your own prompts. And now it's the Mudlark Walter Henry Musk. <laughs> and yeah, Mudlark is a child. So they used to walk around uh, scavenging in the Thames looking for some something useful. So we're going with the kid as a character. Is this Walter Henry Musk? The heart has its reasons which reason knows not of. That is so funny. Agar aapko ek simple innocent bach oh, it's same get I tongo korla. Tommy was up to bat. It's perfect and I want this awesome. We have our ancestor of Elon. Mr. Holmes, didn't expect to see you here. Oh my god, how can it be so good? Now we're going to try something insane. Text to sound effect. Oh, that's so cool. Mmm, dramatic build-up. Oh my god! This is for, for heart attack generation. We don't want this. Now we want something else. We want unwrapping chocolates from a box. It's the weirdest sound idea ever. It's so good! Oh, I want all of them! Do the next sound like chewing chocolate. Like maybe it's cracking, maybe it's... I don't know. This is so good! Did you know this existed? I will, of course, integrate this into the audiobook and you will enjoy this in a minute. Okay, the first one is already amazing. I'm all out of this Bel Belgian chocolate. Damn it. It makes me hungry. Door creaking open. I don't want this to be too prominent, like... Like in a ho old ghost house. Oh, I knew it. This is way too much. Like, the slender man is coming in. Zipping sounds punctuated by a contended sigh. It's again two sounds in one. So this is again a really complex task. But it's quick. Let's go. Oh, it will be so much fun to hear it in the audiobook. Now I have everything. 10 files for voices. And I have about 20 sounds. The final part is really easy. Tell me, what do you make of these? I approached and picked up one of the chocolates, examining it closely. Okay, so in this moment, we need to unwrap the chocolate. And let's see how it plays out. What do you make of these? I approached and picked up one of the chocolates, examining it closely. Okay, we just maybe need the last part here. I approached and picked up one of the chocolates, examining it closely. Oh, this is perfect. Okay, this is how you do it. Now you can just relax, kick back and enjoy the episode of Sherlock Holmes and the case of the chocolate conundrum. Let's go. Holmes and Watson, the case of the chocolate conundrum. It was a fog-laden morning in October when I found Sherlock Holmes gazing intently at a peculiar box of chocolates laid out on the mantelpiece. The fragrant aroma of cocoa mingled with the ever-present scent of tobacco in our sitting room at 221 B Baker Street. Good morning, Watson. Tell me, what do you make of these? I approached and picked up one of the chocolates, examining it closely. They appear to be ordinary chocolates, Holmes albeit of a rather fine quality. Ah, but appearances can be deceiving. These confections are at the heart of a most curious case. Before I could inquire further, Mrs. Hudson knocked lightly and entered, announcing the arrival of a visitor. A Mr. Ray Fayler's shroom to see you, Mr. Holmes. Excellent. Show him in, please. A moment later, a tall, thin man with a weathered face and twinkling eyes stepped into the room. 
he clutched a long pole with a wire loop at the end, a tool of his trade. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. My name is Raphaelis Shroom. I'm a knocker-up by profession. A knocker-up? Yes, sir. I wake the good folk of London so they can get to their work on time. An indispensable service. How may we assist you, Mr. Shroom? Raphaelis shifted uneasily. It's about my daughter, Joanna. She's been accused of theft, stealing a valuable chocolate recipe from the Sweetworth Chocolate Factory where she works. A chocolate recipe? Interesting. It's not just any recipe. It's for their famous Midnight Delight Truffle, a closely guarded secret. The factory claims she sold it to a rival company. And what does your daughter say? She swears she's innocent, but the evidence is stacked against her. They found a copy of the recipe in her locker, and witnesses claim they saw her meeting with a competitor's representative. And you believe she's been framed? Absolutely, Mr. Holmes. Joanna is a good girl. She'd never do such a thing. Very well. Watson and I will look into the matter. Tell me, does the name Walter Henry Musk mean anything to you? Can't say that it does. Never mind. We'll begin our inquiries immediately. After Mr. Shroom departed, I turned to Holmes. What do you make of it? A theft involving a chocolate recipe, a delicate matter indeed, and the involvement of Joanna Shroom adds a personal element. You seem to bring up Walter Henry Musk rather abruptly. Who is he? A mudlark by trade, young fellow who scavenges along the Thames for items of value. He has, on occasion, provided me with useful information. Holmes stood up abruptly. <laughs> Come, Watson. We have much to do. Our first destination was the Sweetworth Chocolate Factory, a grand brick building emitting the rich scent of cocoa that permeated the entire street. Inside, we were greeted by Mr. Reginald Sweetworth himself, a stout man with a waxed mustache and a harried expression. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, I presume. I wish our meeting were under better circumstances. Indeed, Mr. Sweetworth. We are here to ascertain the facts surrounding the alleged theft. Quite right. Follow me, please. He led us to his office, where he presented a neatly folded piece of paper. This is the recipe we found in Miss Shroom's locker. Holmes examined the paper carefully. And you are certain this is the only copy outside of your own records? Positive. The recipe is known only to a select few. It's the cornerstone of our business. May I speak with those who have access to the recipe? Of course. There's myself, our head chocolatier, Mr. Bernard Cadbury, and Joanna Shroom was one of our most trusted employees until this incident. Interesting. And what of the witnesses who claim to have seen her meeting with a competitor? Two employees reported seeing her at a cafe with a man named Victor Cacao, who works for Coco and Company our main rival. May I speak with these employees? Certainly. I'll have them summoned. While we waited, Holmes wandered over to a display case filled with various chocolates. May I? Help yourself. Holmes selected a truffle and bit into it thoughtfully. <laughs> Delicious. The balance of flavors is remarkable. Soon after, two workers entered the office a young woman named Emily, and a middle-aged man named Thomas. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, these are two of my trusted employees, Thomas and Emily. Please, Emily, tell Mr. Holmes what you saw. Hello, gentlemen. Hmm. Yes, I remember clearly. I saw Joanna at the Bluebell Cafe last Tuesday. She was sitting with a man I recognized as Victor Cacao. They seemed to be in deep conversation. I saw them too. Looked quite chummy, if you ask me. I see. That is all I needed to hear. Thank you for your time. As we left the factory, I turned to Holmes. It doesn't look good for Miss Shroom. On the contrary, Watson. I believe things are starting to get interesting. Our next stop was the Bluebell Cafe, a quaint establishment with a view of the Thames. We took a seat by the window and Holmes ordered two cups of hot chocolate. Indulging in the theme of the day, are we? Quite so. 
Now, observe the clientele. Huh. Not really my go-to coffee house, but finally, I can sit down. I glanced around. A few patrons were scattered about, but none seemed particularly noteworthy. Just then, a young man entered, his boots caked in mud. He made his way to the counter and ordered a cup of tea. Mr. Musk, if I'm not mistaken... Mr. Holmes, didn't expect to see you here. Join us, won't you? Walter Henry Musk approached our table hesitantly. How can I assist you, sir? I understand you've been frequenting the riverbanks near the chocolate factory. That's right. Found a few bits and bobs there. Have you come across anything unusual lately? Walter scratched his head. Well, now that you mention it, I did find this. Uh, cocoa powder residue inside. Where did you find this? Washed up on the shore near the factory's discharge pipes. Interesting. Thank you, Mr. Musk. Your assistance is invaluable. After Walter departed, I looked at Holmes quizzically. A tin of cocoa powder? How does that help us? Patience, Watson. All will become clear. Back at Baker Street, Holmes began analyzing the cocoa residue from the tin. Watson, do you recall the truffle I sampled at the factory? Yes, you seemed quite taken with it. Indeed, the flavor profile was distinctive, a hint of anise and a touch of citrus. Unusual for a chocolate truffle. He compared the residue under his microscope. As I suspected. This cocoa contains trace elements of bitter orange, an ingredient not listed in Sweetworth's official recipe. So, the recipe found in Joanna's locker may not be the authentic one. Precisely. I believe someone planted a falsified recipe to implicate her. But who would do such a thing? Watson, don't you remember what I taught you over the years? Consider who stands to benefit from discrediting both Joanna and the Sweetworth brand. The rival company, Coco and Company. Possibly, but I have a hunch there's more to it. Just then, a telegram arrived for Holmes. He read it quickly and smiled. Excellent. The game is afoot, Watson. We must pay a visit to Mr. Bernard Cadbury. Mr. Cadbury's residence was a modest townhouse adorned with various chocolate-themed decorations. The head chocolatier greeted us cordially but seemed nervous. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, what brings you here? Just a few questions about the recipe theft. You were one of the few with access to the recipe, correct? Yes, but I assure you I had nothing to do with it. Of course. Tell me. Have you noticed any discrepancies in the ingredients used lately? Mr. Cadbury hesitated. Well, there was a shipment of cocoa that seemed off. I mentioned it to Mr. Sweetworth, but he dismissed my concerns. Off in what way? The aroma was different, less rich, somewhat tangy. Thank you, Mr. Cadbury. You've been most helpful. As we walked away, I turned to Holmes. Do you suspect Cadbury? Not directly, but his information confirms my suspicions. That evening, Holmes paced our sitting room, deep in thought. Watson, recall the employees who claimed to see Joanna with Victor Cacao? Yes, Emily and Thomas. Consider this. What if they were lying? Holmes, I'm struggling here. Why would they do that? Perhaps they were incentivized to frame Joanna. Just then, there was a knock at the door. Mrs. Hudson announced the arrival of Joanna Shroom herself. Miss Shroom, please come in. Joanna was a young woman with earnest eyes and a determined expression. Mr. Holmes, I had to see you. I didn't do it, I swear. I believe you, Miss Shroom. Tell me, have you ever met Victor Cacao? No, never. I don't even know what he looks like. Did you visit the Bluebell Cafe last Tuesday? Yes, but I was meeting my brother. You have a brother? Yes, his name is Michael. We were discussing a surprise for our father's birthday. Thank you, Miss Shroom. That will be all for now. After she left, I looked at Holmes expectantly. 
So, where does this leave us? At the doorstep of the real culprit, I believe. The following morning, we returned to the Sweetworth factory. Holmes requested a private meeting with Mr. Sweetworth, Bernard Cadbury, Emily, and Thomas. Gentlemen and lady, I have uncovered some intriguing facts about the supposed theft. After Holmes had said that, some gasps echoed through the room. <gasps> I took my time to look at the others, and Mr. Sweetworth in particular looked very impatient. Well, out with it, man. First, the recipe found in Miss Shroom's locker is a forgery. It contains ingredients not used in your actual Midnight Delight truffle. I saw how Bernard Cadbury's eyes widened. That's impossible. On the contrary, Mr. Cadbury, you yourself noticed discrepancies in the cocoa shipments. Holmes turned to Emily and Thomas. Secondly, the witnesses who claimed to have seen Miss Shroom with Victor Cacao were mistaken, or perhaps persuaded to lie. Now see here. Holmes interrupted him by suddenly raising a hand. No need to protest. The truth is, the orchestrator of this scheme is someone with access to the recipe, the means to forge evidence and a motive to sabotage both Miss Shroom and the company. All eyes turned to Bernard Cadbury. This is outrageous. Is it? You were overlooked for a promotion recently, were you not? Passed over in favor of Miss Shroom. Now Mr. Sweetworth's impatience gave way to surprise. Is this true, Bernard? I... I deserve that promotion. I've given my life to this company. You tampered with the cocoa shipments to alter the flavor, forged the recipe, and planted it in Miss Shroom's locker. You even enlisted Emily and Thomas to provide false testimony. He promised us races. Mr. Sweetworth stood up angrily. Bernard, you never appreciated me. This company was built on my creations. But you favored that upstart, Joanna. I believe that concludes the matter. I suggest you contact the authorities, Mr. Sweetworth. As we left the factory, Raphaelis Shroom approached us, gratitude evident on his face. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, how can I ever thank you? No thanks necessary. Justice has been served. Joanna appeared beside her father, her eyes filled with relief. I don't know how you did it, but I'm forever grateful. Just doing our duty. Back at Baker Street, I couldn't help but marvel at Holmes's deductive prowess. You never cease to amaze me, Holmes. It was a simple matter of eliminating the impossible. Besides... The world would be a dull place without a few conundrums to solve. Just then, Mrs. Hudson entered with a tray. I thought you gentlemen might enjoy some hot chocolate after your day's work. Splendid idea, Mrs. Hudson. After all, it seems chocolate was the key to this entire affair. As we sipped the rich, velvety beverage, I chuckled. You know, Holmes... Perhaps we should take on more cases involving confectionery. They're quite delightful. To the sweet taste of justice, Watson. Indeed. A week later, a small package arrived for Holmes. Inside was a box of Midnight Delight truffles and a note from Joanna Shroom. Dear Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, words cannot express my gratitude for your help. Please accept this token of appreciation. May it bring as much joy to you as you have brought to me and my father. Warm regards, Joanna Shroom. Care for one, Watson. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> as we indulged in the delectable chocolates, I mused aloud. You know, it's fascinating how something as simple as chocolate can unravel such a complex plot. Life is full of hidden layers, much like these truffles. One must simply know how to savor them. Well, if that's the case, then here's too many more layers to uncover. Agreed, my dear Watson, agreed. <laughs>